Hello, welcome to Ludic Science. In this video, I will show you this homemade Stirling engine that works reasonably well. It has a maximum speed about 600 RPM. It is made following the ideas of design of Sergio Luis channel. If you like Stirling engines, you should definitely visit his channel. The link is on the description of this video. So let's see the process of construction and the tests of this engine. This video is sponsored by GLC PCB. GLC PCB is a company that makes excellent quality PCBs at an unbeatable price. You can order boards online in minutes. After registration, upload your Gerber files select the PCB properties, select the payment method and place your order. Best price and quality for all your PCB needs. I'm going to use this can, which is a can of compressed air, but you can use any similar can from another product. The important thing is that it is a thin can, so it is very hard. You can also use a soda can, but this have the disadvantage that they are fragile, so the engine can be damaged when you are manipulating it. So it is better to use this type of can. This has approximately the same diameter as a soda can, and I will make a cut at 14 centimeters from the base of the can. After cutting the can, we need to make a small hole at 3 centimeters from the border. And at the opposite side, we make a groove also 3 centimeters in length. This is necessary to install the crankshaft. This is the crankshaft, it is made out of wire and each of the U-shapes are at 90 degrees from each other. I put a small plastic tube here in order to reduce the friction. And this distance is of 9 millimeters, so when rotating the pistons will have a displacement of 18 millimeters. In order to put it on the can, insert one end on the hole that we drilled previously and slide the other end on the groove. For the displacer piston, we need to make this form of wire and we will cover it with steel wool. Ok, here it is. It must have a height of 7 to 8 centimeters and when you put it on the can, it must barely touch the walls of the can. You must feel very little friction when you move it. We need to bend the wire in this way so when we put it inside the can in the crankshaft in this way we can use the pliers to fix it. Additionally we will put a drop of super glue for better fixing to the crankshaft. With the displacer piston in place, we now have to make the power piston, which is nothing more than a balloon that we put atop of the can, but it also must be connected to the crankshaft. This is the power piston. It is a metal washer glued to the balloon using super glue and we also have a hook to couple the power piston to the crankshaft. The hook 
is glued to the washer using also super glue mixed with baking soda. To prevent the balloon from slipping off the can, you can bend the border of the can using your pliers. The power piston is installed and I also sealed the group and bought holes at the sides of the can with epoxy beauty. It is convenient before applying the epoxy to put some oil on the axis and move it from time to time while the epoxy cures to prevent it from sticking to the epoxy. The flywheel is a large nail, a 4 inch nail. The axis was bent at 90 degrees and I fixed the nail with some wire and the mix of cyanoacrylate and baking powder. The last step is to cut a can of a larger diameter and put it in this way, using high temperature silicone. We will put water here to refrigerate the engine. Remember that Stirling engines have two sides, a high temperature side and a low temperature side. The larger the temperature difference, the more efficient our engine will be. Okay, it seems to work pretty well. Let's now test the speed of the engine. I have adjusted the tension of the balloon. It was a little loose. It is now more tight. So let's check the speed.
Okay, that's all for today. I hope you liked the video. If you want to help me, please visit my Patreon page. Thanks for visiting my channel and see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.